living for the past two years in Ames, Iowa, where I'm working as a project coordinator for this research, where we're looking at IPM tactics for apple production. My presentation will be as follows. I'm going to talk about business warning systems for Apple. We'll talk about the intelligence prayer. We'll explain a little bit more about what the research project is about. And we'll show you some of the results from Iowa and Ohio. We use disease warning systems to improve the timing of fungicide and bactericide sprays. So we apply when we really need to, when there is risk for a disease outbreak. To use a disease warning system, we need information about the crop and about the weather conditions on the orchard. For the weather information, we can use a weather station that is installed at our farm, or a weather station that is in a nearby location close enough to assume that the conditions are representative of what is going on at our orchard. In our project, we're using, we're testing two disease warning systems. One for fireflies, which probably most of you are aware of, the marine warning system. And the Zuri Blotchen flight spec warning system that was developed in 2017 in Iowa. This warning system for SDFS uses relative humidity information. So what we do is that our first cover spray, we start tracking relative humidity hours about 90% to time when the second fungicide cover spray should be applied. The threshold that we use is 385 hours. But in this presentation, I'm going to focus on the spray technology. Most of you are aware of the standard air blast sprayer. It's a technology that has been with us in the late 1940s. And it uses a steady spray rate that we calibrate to, let's say, 100 gallons per acre. It's a, a fixed rate. And uh, when we use this technology, the sprayer has no information about what our orchard is like. But there is a new technology that is called the intelligent sprayer. It's been developed by Dr. Hepin Shu and his team in Worcester, Ohio. And the, the goal of the technology is to improve the pesticide spray. There are some works that have shown that the technology can reduce the spray volume used, reduce the spray drift, deliver adequate spray coverage, and potentially saving cost for growers. In this picture that you're seeing here in the bottom right is the intelligence sprayer that we have at the ISU Horticulture Research Station. This is how an intelligent sprayer looks like. It's basically a standard air blast sprayer that's being retrofitted with a set of devices that makes it intelligent. Some of these devices are a display tablet, which is a regular tablet from where we control the whole spraying system. And from this tablet, we can decide if we want to use the standard mode and spray at 100 gallons per acre using a steady rate, or if we want to use the intelligent mode. The intelligent mode will use information provided by this sensor, this LiDAR sensor, which is a, a sensor that uses light beams to make a 3D map. So it scans, it, it scans the tree, and uh, it uses this information to make more targeted spray. The system also has a GPS that is used as a speed sensor. And a very important feature of the system is the solenoid valves that it uses, which can open and close up to 10 times per second, depending on what the LiDAR sensor feeds into the computer. So if we have a gap in our orchard, let's say that a tree um, died or, or something happened and we have a gap, the LiDAR sensor will know that there's a gap and will shut off the, the solenoid valves and will they will open again and spray again as soon as the sensor sees that there's a, an, again a tree or a branch that needs to be sprayed. So when I say that the intelligent sprayer can see the trees, this is kind of what I mean. You can see here a 
normal picture that we the three upper photos. And in the lower ones, you can see how um, the, the laser, you can see uh, in this case a gray light. And you can see how detailed it is that it even is sensing the wires that, it, that you can see there. So the system can see the trees and adjust the sprays in real time. Our research project is a USDA NIFA grant, part of the Crop Protection and Pest Management Program. It's a three year long, it started in 2020. And we have two graduate students working in it Lee Mayer with Iowa State University and Liana Wozicki with Ohio State University. They are, in, they are in charge of the field trials, and I'm going to present some of their findings. We have university trials, uh, far, uh, university farms, and we have on farm trials in commercial orchards. Basically, we're looking at two ways of saving sprays by doing less trips if a uh, disease warning system is implemented and it, and it tells us that there is no risk of disease, we can spray it less times. And the other way that I'm focusing more my talk today about is reducing spray volume by using the intelligent technology. Here we're looking at the spray volume data for 2021 for Iowa. This was a, this is a gold and delicious seminar orchard located at the Iowa State University Horticulture Research Station. And when using the standard technology, the gallons per acre of life was very, were very close to 100 gallons per acre. And when the intelligent mode was on, the amount of pesticide or the amount of spray applied was closer to the 40 and 50 gallons per acre. So this means that we have saved around 50% of spray volume when using that intelligent technology. When we see this reduction in spray volume, we can think, what about spray coverage? Are we doing a good job in that sense? So we run spray coverage trials by using water sensitive cars, like you can see in this picture. And we are installing these cars on trees and applying while using the standard mode and the intelligent mode. This year, what we are seeing is that we're using intelligent sprayer technology. The spray coverage on average is 51%, and when using the standard sprayer, it's in, uh, around, it's in an average of 53%. So we can say that we are looking at equivalent spray coverage when using any of the two technologies. Also, we are looking at a very similar insect pest and disease control. So wrapping this up, what we are looking at is less spray volume, equivalent spray coverage, and similar disease and insect control. Now I'm going to change states. I'm going to talk about the Ohio on-farm trials. We had two on-farm trials in Ohio. These orchards were high-density apple orchards, and one was located in Pascala and the other one in Ridman. And the comparison of here was intelligent sprayer, against the standard spray again. In the Pascala trial, the grower used 32 gallons per acre when using the intelligent technology. And when using the standard technology, he used 75 gallons per acre. And an average of 2020 and 2021 of the trial in Ridman, Ohio, he used 27 gallons per acre when using the intelligent technology and 70 gallons per acre when using the standard. This means around 60% volume reduction in these two commercial orchards. Good news is that market yield was close to 9%, and there were no differences when comparing the intelligent technology to the standard technology. And insect pests and diseases were very low. And here we're looking at the data from Pixie Crunch and Honey Crisp to cultivate where the trial took place. And for the Ridman Ohio trial, this is an average of 2020 and 2021, we see the same trend. Very high marketable 
yield and very low insect pest damage and diseases when using any of the two technologies. Okay, so in summary, we are looking at a reduction in the spray volume and uh, uh, equivalent spray coverage when using the intelligent spray technology. We're looking at very similar insect pest and disease control. And to see if all of this makes sense, we are running economic analysis to understand under which scenarios this technology will make more sense for applications. I would like to thank Brandon Carrante and Nick Powell the ISU Horticulture Research Station and all these people that have helped in the project and Dr. Rankin for inviting me to give this talk. I would like to invite you to visit our website, which you can see down here. Uh, we have a YouTube channel and a Twitter, so feel free to visit our websites. Thank you.